I'm Mish Dilly Jones and this is my inside story. Tell us about yourself. Um, well I started when I was about five and I think like as a kid I had a lot of energy so my parents thought let's put you in a local club and then I was at a grassroots team till about 10 and then I went to Crew Alexander Academy and then unfortunately they folded so then I went to Liverpool and then I was there for about six or seven years and then I moved to Man City Academy when I was 16 and then left when I turned 18 just the summer gone and now I'm at Oval. How's this season been? Uh, it's been quite eventful with a lot of changes but I think finally like we're settled with the right manager and the right people around us that we actually have like a lot of potential to actually achieve a lot of stuff now. So you've been into senior football this season, what's the difference between development and senior football? Probably the mentality, so in development football you could dwell on the mistake and it would be fine, it wouldn't affect you that much but in senior football you've got someone scream at you and you're like I've got to get over that and I've got to get over my mistake. And then physicality, I think I was probably quite nervous about that because I didn't think I was strong enough going into it. But again, the mentality of thinking, oh, I am strong enough going into it, then I think that prepared me well. Is it what you expected or is it harder or easier? Um, I feel like it's easier and harder in some ways. So I think when I came through Man City Academy, everything had to be polished. So it had to be like tick tack football. It was two touch, one touch passing around people. And then going into senior football, I was always told, use your pace to go past people. And I was like, that's not just always my game. Like I like to pass and move and like do different movements to get past different people. So I think that side of the game where I'm, I don't want to just be seen as this person that can just take people on with like pace and skill was probably quite hard to grasp because like sometimes I'm going to have to do that and sometimes I'm going to have to pass the ball get, to get past people. But that was probably quite hard to understand. And then, but then I think like, the getting on with people as well because it was going to be quite hard to like get on with people who I've been playing for years and just knowing their like experience so like Annie who's really experienced and old I think just I didn't think I'd be able to get on with people like that because I've always just been in a young environment so having them in the team is really like cool to be fair. Do you think clubs are doing enough about making players aware at a development level? what senior football is actually like or do you think clubs could do more? I think clubs could do more because I came out of a club where it was well polished you had everything you wanted and then you can get from the deep end where you could not be training like the most like in the week and but I think certain clubs set you up like to look after yourself so I think I was quite grateful at Man City for they set me up on how to manage these injuries how to manage what I'm eating I just think certain clubs do it that you have to be educated enough and certain clubs don't do it. So I feel like I was quite lucky in my situation. You are flying this season. Yeah. Did you have any goals or any targets at the start of this season? Um, well, I think when I was younger, a lot of coaches just look at your stats as a forward. I knew that coming to senior football, like if I was getting looked at when I'm under 16s, coming into senior football, they're going to look at your stats and I thought, I've got to get some goals, I've got to get some assists and I want to help push the team to probably get promoted. Like probably the position at the moment isn't like the most great one we could be in, but I think like the energy of the club as well, we can probably carry on striving going forward. So just getting goals, assists and helping the club out. What do you think are your goals going forward? Um, well, I was looking to go to America after finishing sixth form, but I just felt like it wasn't the right thing to do. So uh, I just decided not to and just decided to play football here. So probably when I got older, look to play professionally in America. I was like watching the USA League and just something I've always wanted to do when I was older. What advice would you give to any young player making the jump from development football to adult football? Probably that in development you're going to have a lot of different coaches and you're going to have a lot of different coaches that are going to believe in you. So whatever coach you have going into senior football, they could change within a month or they could be there with you for years. But you just got to like focus on yourself and realise like yeah this coach had this opinion on me a few years ago but like this is a clean slate so I've got to just focus on myself and set myself goals and like everything else that I can't control forget about that and just focus on what I can control. So can you tell us a bit about your international career? Um, so I was with Wales uh, North Regional squad from probably quite a young age uh, that's where I met like a lot of my best mates in football, like Elise and M Jones. And I think having them mates, it helped us like we push each other, get into the actual full Welsh squad. So I was in the under 15s um, 
for a couple of years. So I did two Bob Docker teams with them, which was a good experience. And then went to the under 17s where we qualified for the elite phase, which was the first time in quite a long while. And we had a lot of good players in the squad and a lot of like good energy. And then we went to Denmark and it just wasn't the same type of feeling I've had before in the past with Wales. So I thought to have a bit of time out. And then I came back this year and I just didn't feel the same again. So I think I'm just focusing solely on club and just putting all my energy into that. And I think that's the right decision because I'm really happy in football and that's all I've really got to focus on. If you could play any other sport in the world, what would you play? Um, I like tennis and athletics, to be fair. But probably tennis, like Wimbledon. Love it, to be you fair. Been? No, I think that's the goal, actually. Go to Wimbledon, probably next summer. Who's your best friend in football? My best friend in football? Um, I'd probably say TJ, actually. I think like, when I come to training and I could be in a proper terrible mood, I just look at TJ and how she's just entertaining herself with no one else. Entertainer, like, it, it just makes me laugh. Like, I just don't know, just the energy is just class. And um, probably an ace as well. So we've known each other from Wales for like a lot of time. And like, yeah, it's funny to wind her up, but like, if she's upset, then you've got to go and check on her because you've took it a bit too far, but she's your mate, so you have to. I don't know, I've just got a lot of mates through football, I think, so it's quite a good position to be in, to meet a lot of new people. Do you have any mates outside of football? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, probably my schoolmates, but it's quite sad because when I went home, everyone's in uni, so I haven't seen them for a long time either. So going home at Christmas, I'm probably really excited to see them lot and see how they're doing with uni. If you could invite three people to your house, who would they be? And why? Um, and why? As in famous people or just anyone? Famous people. Famous people. Not your best friend. <laughs> TJ. <laughs> uh, probably. Tobin Heath is my football inspiration. I think just she's just so cool. And like just everything she does, I'm just like, yeah, I want to do that. That's so cool. Like she has this thing where like her shin pads are proper low, but I can't do that because it's not comfortable at all. So Tobin Heath, music wise, I'd probably say Harry Styles because I just think he's class as well. I just love Harry Styles. His new album came out last night, actually, Friday night, so. <laughs> um, and Serena Williams, I think because of like her, empowerment in sport for like females is just like phenomenal and just, I think she's a really inspirational not someone I probably inspired to but a lot of people are inspired by her so I think she'd be like cool to learn a lot about. What's it like playing for the fans? So you have one of the best attendance rates in the National League at the moment. What's it like playing for the loads of young fans and, and people that are supporting you? At first it was a bit of a shock because I didn't really think there'd be that many people there. Um, but I think like when we played in the FA Cup and we had quite a big attendance and there was a lot of noise coming from the crowd, you get this like type of feeling where you're not just doing it for yourself or your team, you're doing it for everyone else sitting in the stand because they take the result to heart like we do as well. So like if we've lost, we're not gonna have the greatest like mood on the weekend and neither are they. So I feel like you're not just playing for yourself, but you're playing for the whole club and the supporters as well. What's it like working with next gen? Next gen. I feel like the people we've got there are always there for us. So if I've got a problem, I'll just go straight to them and they'll get it sorted. And it's always not just about, oh, do you want this, do you want that? It's how are you? How are you doing today? Like, how are you feeling? Which is what we need. And um, my parents like really approved of that because they knew that I've just left home this summer that they wanted me to be working under someone who's going to be there for me as a person, not just as a football player. And I think I've got that.